Hey tech heads, this is tech Ed Kirsch here and in this video I'm going to show you how you can fix some errors in ORCID capture, namely a piece by profile not existing or a footprint missing. So let's start with the footprint. Here you'll see the online DRC error in the lower left saying that we don't have a PCB footprint for L2. Let's double click on the text or the error here. It will highlight the component in ORCID capture. So I'm going to double click on the part now in the schematic, make sure I'm in the parts tab, then go to PCB footprint. In PCB footprint, I'm going to paste the footprint name that I would have from my footprints folder. So here I copy and pasted a footprint name that I grabbed from like my notes or notepad when I made a footprint. And then that would solve the issue. So let's right click and click save. And that will close that. Now we'll see that the error should have disappeared. It's still saying that, but oh, there's an illegal character dot. So the footprint error thing disappeared, but now we've got a dot inside the footprint. Anyway, it lets you know that it's updated. We can take it out. So that's how you replace the footprint missing error issue. The next problem is a uh, piece by simulation profile missing. So let's say you try to run a, run a simulation and it gives you the error. Let me show you what I'm talking about, like a nice example, something like this, right? The part or device cannot be simulated. No piece by template found on Q1. All you have to do is go to whatever the device is. Let's say M1 is the one that has this error. You would first of all, right click or double click and check the properties. And what they're talking about is a piece by template like this. This piece by template is important in order for you to simulate. There are a couple of ways to fix this. What you can do is close this, right click, oh, excuse me right click on the part, then choose to associate a piece by model, go through the process of procedure in order to do that. Okay. It's asking, do I want to overwrite? What you do is go to the model library field, click browse, choose a piece by model template, typically something like discrete analog or something. Let's see if discrete actually exists or something like FET MOSFET. So you would choose your MOSFET. Something like MOSFET driver. Now it'll say no matching symbols found. So what I'll do is I'll click cancel. And how do you fix this error? Well, how do we know which library to choose from? You would choose to edit properties on the part and find, let me cheat here and find a model. Capture library piece by PWR MOS. All right. So let's assume you have the library file, the .lib file that has the spice model for your part, but you just don't know how to associate it. So now what you write, do is right click associate piece by model. Yes. And then I will browse for the power M at PWR MS library. Here we go. Power mouse. Then it will show me matching models. Now I could choose to show all models or just matching. I prefer just the matching of course. And then here I have my complete pick of whatever I want that actually matches. So that would be the IRF 840. And I don't quite see exactly it here. I can maybe look for it. IRF 840. Okay. I'll put asterisk around here as wildcard characters. Nothing really. Let's just pick something. Say it's the IRF 110 or something like that. Then you would check the pins that actually match. Look at the model file, see what numbers make sense and what, what uh, pin names make sense. Then the model terminals select here. Oh, this is weird. Okay. It has two, three, two, one, zero. But anyway, let's assume like, um, so you have, we have our pin numbers. This would be say pin number 20, right? Let's say 20 is over, over here or something. Um, this would be our source. And then, we choose that because we know that pin number 20 on this part is supposed to be the source. And then here, this is supposed to be the gate and that would be pin number 10 and then pin number 30 or three zero would be the train. And then we would update the selected one. If we only want to update this part, if we want to update all copies of this part on a schematic spreadsheet, I mean on a schematic, excuse me, we would choose update all. I'm not going to do that because that's going to mess up my spice model for this. Okay, so that is how you would associate a piece bias component or a piece bias 
simulation model with a component component on the schematic capture uh, program. Now here's the other thing. You want to create a simulation profile if you don't have one already. Then go to piece by new simulation profile, you make it you know, transient 2 or something like that. Then you want to go to the configuration files, choose library, and make sure you have the non.lib library in your configured files. How do you find this? You go to browse, then navigate to the default installation folder, cadence, spp underscore 17 point x, then we select tools, capture, library, pspice, or excuse me, tools, pspice, then library, confusing, right? Then we would navigate to the same lib file, pwrmos, just for good measure, right? Add this to the design. And this non.lib, the non.lib is in the same folder. We just scroll down here. It's non right there. Okay, that's already added. But when we add it, we choose add as global instead. That's why it has the globe around there. Okay, so you go ahead, click apply. This is just for good, good measure. Just to make sure that this thing actually simulates. Notice I didn't have it before inside. I didn't have my um, powermos.lib file in my directory before, or my simulation uh, configuration path before, but it, it still simulates in the design. But if you want to be safe, if you're using a third-party um, lib file and it's not in a default folder or even if it is then you want to add that and follow that procedure okay so then you go ahead simulate and you'll get your results now all I have to do is get a probe here for my voltage on the output and this is looking pretty wonky oh they one microsecond no wonder okay and then you can get into editing your simulation profile. You know, you can set it to 6 milliseconds. This is the switch from a power supply to buck convert. And then, you know, you rerun your simulation. And there you go. Okay, so that is how you solve that simulation problem. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, feel free to like, subscribe, comment. Definitely it helps the video out, helps the channel out. Really appreciate you watching me, staying with me all these years uh, when I started posting in 2017, I believe, on the YouTube for ORCAD because I just wanted to help students. But I found that a lot of people like yourself, working professionals, engineers, companies, and all that stuff, in addition to students, have been checking out the channel as well. So, um, yeah, I have, if you haven't noticed already, I have rebranded the channel. And and uh, there's, a, there's reasons to that and whatnot. I will share that in another follow-up video but I feel like that this was a great opportunity for me to start rebranding start doing things differently and really uh, go all in and full-time on this YouTube thing so I can bring in more content all the time all right thank you so much for watching this would not be possible without you and your views your viewership and the time you spend here I really appreciate it and uh, you have a good one all right see you techers and tech heads uh, bye